If you watch my channel, you know I'm a huge fan of the Chewy HI-12, one of the best two-in-ones to come out of China last year. I was very excited when the HI-13, the follow-up to the HI-12, was just released, and I've been putting it through its paces for the past week or so. Here's my full review. Hi, my name's Andrew, and this is the full review of the Chewy HI-13. Let's find out if it's worth your money. Claim these are 3D speakers, whatever that means, but the fact of the matter is these are flat sounding, there is not that much bass, and the volume is not great. Now I was able to use the DFX sound booster and that helped. Here's the difference between the two. It is safe to say that the speakers are the Achilles heel of what otherwise is a great device. 
Now, the keyboard dock provides two additional USB Type A ports, which will power an external HD or hard drive, and it really is a must have accessory, in my opinion. It worked pretty well. Now, it connects magnetically to the bottom of the tablet through the pogo pin connectors you see here and it worked pretty well. The magnet was pretty strong and pretty sturdy. Now the keyboard is weighted, so it will give you somewhat of a balance, but it can only go back so far before it tips over. Now, as far as key travel is concerned, it's about two millimeters, which was really great. It was nicely sized or island style, chiclet style keys, and they were pretty good. I like the fact that there are dedicated buttons for the end, page up, page down, home, and delete keys all in the same row. Now the fact that this is a nicely sized keyboard layout, it is comfortable to type on for extended periods of time. Chewy did a very good job on this iteration of the keyboard dock. Now as far as the trackpad is concerned, it was okay, it's serviceable, you can do two finger scrolling, Windows 10 gestures work well, although I did find myself activating Windows 10 gestures inadvertently many times. Now, as far as stylus support, it definitely supports the stylus. It's the original Chewy HI Pen H3. It's a dual chip stylus. It has 1,024 levels of pressure sensitivity. And I have to say, it's a more premium looking stylus that we're used to coming out of China. And it worked great. It looks a little bit like the Surface Pen you get with the Surface Book. I wonder if that's a coincidence or not. But it did work well as far as palm rejection is concerned. That worked and it had pressure sensitivity. So the more you pressure you put, the darker the line you get. Now it did work well with OneNote and other note taking applications, as well as art apps and drawing apps. I think this is a big selling feature with this device and much like the Surface Book or it's much more expensive competitor, the Surface Book at $1,500, this is a great alternative because you get the pen support that you don't normally would get on a Surface Book. And it worked pretty well as far as I'm concerned. So no. milliampere battery or 37 watt hour battery and you're going to get about six to seven hours total battery life with this device now depending on your usage it will vary 
with screen at about 75% with light gaming, YouTube, Netflix, web browsing via the Edge browser, I was able to get about six and a half hours at most. Now, again, your miles may vary depending on the task at hand, so please keep that in mind. So, at the end of the day, can I recommend the Chewy HI13? Is it worth your hard-earned money? And the answer is absolutely. This is one of the best two-in-ones to come out of China. First, here's what I like. I love its beautiful, sharp display that's a resolution of 3000 by 2000, the same as a Surface Book. I like its quality stylus, so digital note-takers and digital artists will certainly like that. And the good performance from the Apollo Lake is certainly a step up over the Cherry Trail Atom processor. I like the fact that it uses a fast Samsung eMMC, and I like the fact that it has wireless AC with good range, and the keyboard dock worked as advertised with two additional USB 2.0 ports. But as with any device, there are going to be things that need improvement, and here they are. I wasn't crazy about its flat, subpar speakers. This is a heavy device, over 4 pounds with the keyboard dock, something to keep in mind. And it doesn't have any USB Type-A full size on the tablet itself, although you do get those two additional USB Type-A on the keyboard dock. But with those few negatives aside, I have to say this checks all the boxes you'd want in a 2-in-1 coming out of China. It's got a great, bright, sharp display, it's got pen support that work pretty well, and it had very good wireless range in the wireless AC. It's got an excellent keyboard dock that really had very good key travel and really worked well. All coming together, making this a very good buy. Now, the only thing holding me back from an editor's choice is the battery life and the lackluster speakers. So what do you think about the Chewy HI13? Do you think it checks all the boxes that you'd want in a two-in-one coming out of China? I think it does. I like the fact that it has that beautiful Surface Book display. It's bright, it's crisp, it's sharp. Everything you'd want in display. Despite the fact that it's non-laminated, it's still a very nice display. I like its pen support. It's a more premium pen that we're normally used to seeing out of China. Really good pen performance. Also, I like the fact that the Chewy HI13 has good performance with its Apollo Lake processor. Now, keep in mind, this is a heavy device at over four pounds with the keyboard dock, almost 4.3 pounds, I believe, and it really is heavy. And I used it most of the time in laptop mode, occasionally in tablet mode, but then again, I have a $1,500 Surface Book that I use very occasionally with the clipboard mode, as uh, Microsoft likes to say. But I think overall, it checks all the boxes. The only thing holding it back from an AMD Tech Editor's Choice Award is the fact that it has lackluster battery life and I thought that the speakers were subpar. But I'm curious to know what you think. Leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know if this is something you're interested in. If you picked one up, I'm curious to know how it's been working out for you. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook and on Twitter and our website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.